All right, so I think we are live. Sweet. I switched up the um, the way that the uh, computer or the way that the screen shows everything. So, anyways, awesome. So I am so excited to have you, Nicole. Um, I actually I've never really met you. Well, I did meet you one time in person. In, I think um, it was in New Orleans, wasn't it? It was in yeah, it was in New Orleans, and um, it was just for a short period. You and your crew came up from Wisconsin. You guys drove down there and yeah. had the whole team and. Um, then shortly after that, you moved, and I was like, what the heck? Where did she go? So you've been really the first person that I've kind of watched um, that switched over to EXP, and I had yeah. moved in 2015 to Keller from my builder. I'm like, okay, this, you know, it intrigued me, but, you know, I just shut my, put my blinders on and kept moving forward. And But um, for two years, I've been watching. Um, you were kind of, you know, one of the people, because I feel like you're a really powerful, independent woman, you know, you kind of, you run your team, and you're somebody that I look up to, and. Oh, thank you. Actually, somebody that I went to for some advice, and, and that was a key part in the decision, you know, when you told me, you have to remove the emotion and look at it from a business decision, because I feel like as women, we are constantly, well, it's just personally, I'm out, there's so much emotion involved in every decision that I make. Yeah. Um, and you have to look at it just black and white sometimes and say, this makes sense. So, yeah, it, yeah. absolutely. My pleasure. And, and I appreciate that. And I'm, I'm glad that I had an impact because it's awesome to, to work with agents like you who, and I hear that a lot, uh, you know, I followed you, I've watched this happen and, and, you know, now look, it's over two years later and, and we're, we're doing well. And, are, are the companies doing phenomenally well? And it's it's a really exciting place to be. And it you know decisions like that changes are not made lightly, and ma they're certainly not made in jest. And um, I had been looking for about four four and a half years for another model, and nothing. Um, I, I stayed as long as I did because nothing made more sense until I saw EXP. And when I really like went back and took an objective view of it. And I had, you know, I had some sweetheart offers from other companies, other firms out there that, but at the end of the day, it just long-term didn't make sense. And I didn't like, I felt like I was just going to be back in the same place that I was. And that's, I wanted more than that. And, um, you know, I, so we came over and I'm so glad that we came when we did. And, you know, it was February 19th of 2016. So just over two years ago and you know, I was agent 900 something. We're almost 9,000 now. That's yeah. insane growth. That is so, ins it's so exciting to be a part of and watch. It's, it's yeah. really fun. So why were you looking for a different model? Um, for a variety of reasons. Um, I just, I, just, <sighs> I don't want to say anything disparaging about my former company because I love them dearly. And there was a lot of really great things. I'm grateful. That's where I came from. I just kind of hit the peak of what was going to happen with my business locally in terms of that conjunction with the firm mm -hmm. and nothing to do with like my personal team's production, but in terms of my own personal self growth and development and leadership on a local level, it wasn't going to move any further. Um, and I, I felt like the company that I left was not the company I joined, and I was looking for more of that that next level innovation and leadership and momentum and trajectory. And um, I really just felt like the EXP is where the next version of that is going to be. Yeah, yeah, that's me too. Um, so tell me a little bit about your your history with real estate. When did you get in? What does your team look like? Just a little bit about you personally. So I got my license in June of 2007. I was in mortgage prior to that and home with my son for two years prior to um, getting my real estate license. Um, I was the rookie of the year my first year um, at KW. Um, and then my second year, I was the number one agent in our area um, mm -hmm. in our, in our, within our brokerage and, you know, maintained that for several years until um, – I left and came over to EXP. So my team, um, I've got uh, three buyer agents, just hired a third, um, and two administrative staff. I have a uh, director of operations and a listing manager. 
um, that run the back end of things for me. They're, you know, everyone, they're wonderful. They, you know, my uh, listing manager and my director of operations have both been with me for over three years. Uh, my agents are um, just good people. We have really good energy, and it was really nice for us to be able to remove from the office environment that we were in into a much more positive place. Yeah. Um, and it's just, it's been really great. Yeah. Well, so you have a really big team. Actually, I didn't realize you had so many agents, on, like buyer's agents and stuff on your team. Um, you know, I've had larger, I've had smaller. I really kind of like this midsize um, team that I've got now. It's, I just find it's much, it's easier to manage. I don't, you know, I, you're, a few years ago, I used to be like, I want to be the biggest, you know, agent out there and the, the number one, whatever. And like, I don't care about that anymore. I really don't. I think, right. I think it's maybe it was showing my age, but I'm like, I just want a, a good group of good people that do good business and are, have good hearts and yeah. care for each other. That's more important to me than the rest of it. I think yeah. that was like my younger self, like, cause I'm usually super competitive that way. And I'm like, you know what, as long as everyone's happy, we're, we're good. Like, I, I just, I don't need to be working 80 hours a week anymore. I'm done with that. Yeah. I, you know what, now that I've um, moved over, I've been doing a lot of soul searching because I was kind of a lot like yeah. you where it's like, I'm going to have this huge team. I'm looking at expansion. I'm doing this, this, this. And then at the end of the day, I'm like, why am I doing this? Mm -hmm. And I feel like it was, you know, I, I did feel a lot of pressure to be, like do more and more and more and more. And that's just kind of me by nature. But then I was like, why do I want to do that? You know, I have a, a good solid team. We do a good chunk of business. And now with EXP, I'm like, I have other opportunities to make some extra cash yeah. too. And I want to be like Nicole Charles and fly all over the world. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, but it's so funny because that people, people talk about that a lot with me because if you, if you know me, you know, I'm always on a plane. Actually, I'm going to Iceland on Friday. Um, so I, <laughs> that's what fills my bucket more than yeah. anything. Like I, you know, I live in a very average house. I have a very average vehicle. I'm not a flashy person, um, whatsoever. I choose to spend my money on travel and making memories with my kids. Cause I, you know what, the, the house, the car, the, the, the purses, the, the, whatever they I can't take those with me. And I, and I, it's funny cause my, my perspective on that has flipped, but, but Seriously, having the next trip on my calendar, having the next thing, knowing that I've got something like that to look forward to, even if it's just for a few days, is what fills my bucket. And that's what I'd rather do than, than like, try to chase this big, huge team. And, you know, I used to think that I wanted to sell 500 transactions a year. I really did. And I was, like, on a clear path for that. And I kind of, you know, I went through a divorce, and I've got two kids, and um, my ex-husband and I thankfully have a very amicable relationship and we have the kids 50, 50, but I'm like, and we live four blocks away on the same street from each other. Like our kids are very close, <laughs> um, but you know, I decided like I wanted when, when my kids are home, I'm going to be home. I'm not working. And I've, yeah. it's been, um, almost four years that I've been doing that, that I'm home when my kids are home, I'm not working, you know, whereas before when, when we were still married, you know, yeah, I'm going to work all weekend and I'll work this night and that night and everything else because, you know, if I'm not home, he's home or, or whatever. I just don't, I don't do that anymore. And it's great. <laughs> it's really yeah, great. That's awesome. Well, and that's part of why you, in the beginning, when you build a team, you know, going through some of those growing pains and hiring and all that kind of stuff, that's one of the benefits of having that leverage is being able to, you know, take advantage of time with your family and that's really what it's about. I mean, like, seriously, what are we working for? There, this, a lot of times people think that real estate is so easy, like, oh, you just sell a house and boom, it's so stressful. Like there's so <laughs> many different things that go into it. I'm like, oh my God, I'm gonna have a panic attack here. <laughs> it is, seriously. it is. But I think what you said before about like soul searching to figure out what do you really want? Like, why did I wanna, why did I wanna sell 500 houses a year? Because I wanted, what, all the money? I wanted the recognition. Like, you know what? Somebody else can take the damn trophy. I don't yes. care. I just, I want to be happy. I want to give, be able to have my kids experience different things in different realms of the world. I want to be able to, you know, put a roof over their head and food on the table and be very comfortable doing so. And I have that. I am really blessed in that regard. Um, so I don't, you know, I don't need to be the one that's hustling 24 seven. And, and for those who want to, good for you. Like, it's really exciting when, when, you know, you're in the midst of that and part of it. I just, that's no longer where I choose to focus my time. Yeah. 
Well, so. I, I envy you. I would love to be on a plane every week and that's not every so. week. I haven't been on a plane since <laughs> January. <laughs> Some I was, sweet deals. <laughs> you know, I was talking to um, uh, my uh, one of my um, team members the other day, and you know, this winter I feel like a little bit like season. Like I'm just off. I feel like I'm in a little bit of a funk for some reason, and I wasn't putting my finger on it. And they're like, Nicole, I'll think about it. You're usually on a beach at least once a month for a week this, this time of year, and you haven't been to a beach since October. And I'm like, yeah. oh, my God, I think that's it. I li- li- Literally, because usually I'll, I'll be in Mexico or the Bahamas or, or whatever, Yeah. and I haven't been. Um, so I'm going to Iceland. On, uh, my last trip, I was in, uh, in, in New York for Inman in January. Prior to that, I was at um, EXP uh, shareholders meeting in Fort Lauderdale and then went to, or, and then went to um, – Puerto Rico for a couple of days on a brief mission trip. So it wasn't like a, yeah, it was, it was nice out, but it wasn't a vacation. It was right after the hurricane we brought um, oh, supplies sure. down. And yeah. um, so anyway, I'm like, I'm going to Iceland. I'm leaving Wisconsin and to go to Iceland <laughs> for a few days. But the the silver lining, the, like the beautiful thing about this is I get to go hang out with my best friend, my college roommate for a few days. And then I'm home for a couple of days. And I'm taking my kids to Hawaii for spring break. So I'm like opposite sides of the world here. And yeah. I'm hoping that, like, that sunshine and, and warmth. So the learning lesson for me in that is next year I need to book more beach time. <laughs> well, you're kind of last, like, could you do, uh, and I haven't had a chance to go on, but you do some um, live videos with how you find yeah. some sweet deals. And they're yeah. always kind of last minute, right? Not, like, no, super no, last, not minute, last but... minute. The, like, this Iceland deal, we're flying from Chicago to Reykjavik on Iceland Air. We've got, um, it's five. Four, four, five nights, whatever it is, um, fully escorted tour accommodations, the whole nine yards. It was 500 bucks, and we booked it like four months ago. So it's not always a last minute thing. That's why I went to Egypt this summer. I, yeah. or last summer I booked Egypt um, at the end of February, beginning part of March, and we didn't go until August. And it was $600 for 11 nights, fully escorted, five, four and five star accommodations with an Egyptologist tour guide and security. It was incredible. incredible. So they're not always like last minute, Super, sometimes yeah. they're always, but yeah. Well, so if anybody's watching and they want to get some sweet travel deals, keep <laughs> yeah. an eye on Nicole. She's, yeah. she's always got the hookup. You should be a travel agent, you know, a real estate agent. <laughs> I'm, uh, I, I'm actually creating a different Facebook page because I have um, so many people that ask me about it. It's just because that's my passion and I love it. So yeah. I'm creating a separate Facebook page where I can teach people how to find the stuff. So it's in the making. I'll let you know. When it's that's done. awesome. Cool. All right. Well, let's just dive into, um, we'll t- dive into EXP. So yeah. how did you hear about it? How, who like reached out or did you do the research and then why did you make the move? So like I said before, I've been looking for several years. It's actually funny. If my One of my cousin's best friends is, uh, helped launch EXP with Glenn in Washington several years ago. And I met her in, in Mexico at my cousin's wedding. Um, and I was, uh, you know, we knew some of the same people. Obviously, this industry is very small. Um, but it really, it was uh, Sherry White, who was the former team leader at KW. Um, I had recruited her and her now ex-husband over to KW uh, from uh, Viridian, which is one of our largest home builders. And even when she was team leader, she and I were both together looking for a different fit. Um, and it, and finally one day it was, uh, November, 2015, she called me and she's like, Nicole, I think I found it. We got to have some wine and chat. And I'm like, all right, wine and chat. I'm there. So, yeah. um, we met at a, a local place. I had a couple glasses of wine. She showed me again, this is November of 2015. She goes over the model with me and I'm kind of sitting there like, this can't be right. Like it just seemed too good. Um, so that January, so I started doing a little bit of research and kind of taking a look at things and really starting to take inventory of if I'm going to make a move, what does the next company have to have other than, other than it needs to feel good, what does it have to have? Like, what do I want? And so I wanted, um, obviously money is a big motivator when it comes to that. Um, but I also wanted something that I felt like was going to be the next, thing like if we look at the history of real estate about every 10 15 years or so there's a next bigger and best company and or there's something that happens within the market that really changes things and you know like 
C21 was the first company to the franchise. Realty execs created the cap. Remax is for more of that um, entrepreneurial agent and with higher fees and higher splits, but we're not going to handhold you. KW strives for a bunch of former Remax people, and now here we are. But there's really been no major change in that market. And when we start looking at market disruptors, and at the same time, like I'm watching – you know, all the, the retail is, and brick and mortar is dying, a mm-hmm. not slow, slow death. And there will always be a spot for some brick and mortar. Don't get me wrong. Like, there yeah. always will be, in my opinion, a spot for that. But the reality is the vast majority of what has to happen doesn't have to happen between walls anymore. It can happen anywhere. And um, so anyway, I looked at it, and I um, was heading to, again, to Inman in New York, uh, and had set up a meeting with Jason Guessing, who was our president at the time, is now our CEO. Um, that meeting turned into four and a half hours, and I'm like, I got to be in business with this guy, and uh, this is a really cool thing, and I'm really excited to see where it goes. Like, you talk to me more about the vision and long term with the company, and I'm like, all right, this this is it. Um, and when I looked at when I looked at the model, I looked at it for a different way, a few different ways, and if I was strictly looking at dollars and cents on the front end in terms of my sales. Um, I wasn't really netting anything different than what I was at uh, my former company. Like, that was roughly the same. And quite frankly, if you're only leaving a company for a better split, then then just stop. Like, don't your – there's always going to be a better split somewhere else. Like, right. That's, you know, that, so that was, my team members came out slightly ahead. I was roughly the same based on the same production within about $1,000. It wasn't a big deal. Um, when I looked at, uh, and quite frankly, I didn't believe in revenue share. <laughs> it's funny because, like, I'm a huge believer in revenue share now because I've seen what it can do. Yeah. And it, I've seen what it's done for me. Um, but I didn't really believe it because in my head I still had um, profit share in my head, which is a great thing. And the challenge is that word profit. And when it, when you have I had agents in several um, market centers that I never received profit share from because their office was never profitable, which is fine. And I get that that's the model and that's wonderful. And, and but when you I'm literally over ten times the amount in six months of revenue share than I got in a year of profit share. It's yeah. it's crazy. Um, but the stock portion is really what did it for me in that I have large goals of being a vagabond when my <laughs> kids are out of school. Yeah. So my youngest is in seventh grade. Um, so he was in fifth grade when, when I came over. And looking at the stock, you know, we have six different ways to earn stock. The Icon Agent Program is what, what pushed me over the edge because – um, I knew, with, if you're not familiar, Icon agents um, qualified to get their entire cap reimbursed in stock annually, and our cap is 16,000. Everyone's on an 80-20 split until the cap is 16,000. And so I lo- looked at it and went, okay, I qualify for the Icon agent just by doing the same thing I've always done. If I do nothing other than get my cap reimbursed in stock annually for the next 10 years that I'm in real estate before I'm out of it, for 10 years, and the stock never does a thing. If it never goes up, it was 73 cents a share the day I joined, by the way. Uh, it was like 10 years from now, I've got another 160000 in the bank. Like, I can do some stuff with 160000 That was like assuming the stock never did it. Well, 73 so, cents. 73 cents a share. <laughs> but here's my long-term plan, like if it never changes. And Yeah, yeah exactly. And I'm just pulling up right now on my Ameritrade account to see where it is right now. So we're at 12.20 today. Um, so anyway, my my ten year my ten year plan was 160,000. I'm just over two years in. I've got like 400,000 in stock. So I'm like, I'm doing pretty well. I, I yeah. can't complain about that. And that doesn't include revenue share. So yeah. it's, it's and that didn't that like you didn't change anything about your business. Like you oh. kept selling real estate. Yep. And now you're getting all that money back in stock and you have the revenue share, mm-hmm. which you said wasn't a big deal for you when you came on board. I didn't that's really one of the it. things. Yeah. <laughs> what's well what, what's so crazy about it is my first month's revenue share was over a thousand dollars. And I was like, oh that's nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I didn't know my next month was like twelve hundred. I'm like, oh that's good. I've only ever had two checks that or two revenue share checks since I joined that were under a thousand dollars. They were both like eight and nine hundred dollars. 
And it wow. wasn't until like last summer when I'm like, uh, well, so a few things happened to me when it came to revenue share. Uh, I had, for uh, for those of you who don't know me, I'm an uh, amputee. My right leg is amputated. I have a prosthetic leg. And uh, about a year and a half ago, I had to have my Achilles completely reconstructed on my left leg. So I had to live in a nursing home for several weeks, was in a, was wheelchair bound for months. Um, so I couldn't walk, much less, you know, get into my car to go show a house and open a door or anything else. And I was like, I need to really start focusing on, a, a, thankfully, I have a team and, and that was there that to help me get through it. But I'm like, what happens if I don't? What happens at some point I don't have a team? And there's a very strong likelihood this could happen to me again. And I'm like, I need to focus on additional sources of income. Yeah. And um, <laughs> revenue share was coming in. My revenue share checks at the time were like two, three thousand dollars. And I'm like, where, where am I going to get more income from? I wasn't yeah. even paying attention to it. And then this last yeah. summer, I started getting checks that were six, seven thousand dollars. And I'm like, all right, I need to, I, I need to pay attention and focus on this. So that's when I really started focusing on revenue shares, really just the end of last year. Um, and so now I've got over 100 people within my group um, in total. I've got, I think it was 20 on my first line, over 100 within my group in Wisconsin, Minnesota, um, Oklahoma, Missouri, and Texas are the five states that I have right now, I believe, off the top of my head. Um, I've got several others that are coming on within the next um, couple of months, which is really exciting. But I'm projecting that um, I should make about 120,000 just in revenue share this year. Like it's yeah, it's crazy. And like that's some life changing shit right there. <laughs> like, it is. It's freaking really crazy. And that and that's. I mean, the average. I mean, there's a couple of averages, but I mean, what does the average real estate agent sell? every year like six right. houses three houses i mean you're Depends making triple that in revenue mm -hmm. share and you weren't even being intentional about it in the beginning no it was i was just kind of like oh whoa yeah. this is extra this is cool and that's how i was too about profit share because i remember when i was um you know gonna make the move and it for me it was a perfect fit like i remember telling my team leader like hey I don't think I'd ever want to leave because I get so much value from here. I don't see any other, um, you know, model that I would want to move to. Um, but when I, you know, when I was talking to people, they were talking about profit share and they, they would always be like, oh, it's like network marketing or MLM or whatever. And I honestly had, I didn't do any agent attraction, anything like that. People just came to me because of the agent and the business that I did and who I was as a person, you know, right. and that's how I feel like with revenue share, it's the same thing. If you do good business, people are going to want to know and want to, you know, they're going to want to be a part of it too. <clears throat> and like for me, it's almost like I feel passionate about sharing it with people because it, it's life changing. $120,000 a year is life changing. $400,000 in stock is life changing. You know what I mean? Like we work too hard in this business and every single year that we start over January one, it's back to the rat, rat race. We're in this hamster wheel constantly like slinging houses like every single day. When's our next sale? When's our next sale? Like you can have a huge month, but you don't get to enjoy it because you're constantly looking 45 days out. Mm -hmm. Where am I at in April? Where am I at in May? Right. You know, so that's what I love about EXP is they're giving you two other additional income streams that you can take advantage of um, right now. And in 10 years from now, it, you could have a completely different life and be living on a beach like above. Right. Absolutely. And, like, and, and let's be very clear. It doesn't have to be $100,000 a year or $400,000 in stock. No. You know, $10,000 a year can be life changing for people. It, it really yes. can. And it's really whatever it is that you put into it. And, and you know, the haters going to hate, but let's be very clear here. Brokers make their money by recruiting. Yes. They all do. That's how it all works. And one of the great things that Keller Williams brought to our industry was the concept of profit share. They are the first company to systematically financially reward agents for the growth of the company. Because, again, let's be very clear, brokers make their money by recruiting. They recruit agents, regardless of what company they're at, based on the relationships that are had with other agents. That's how it works. And so who cares that you're getting paid for it? That's awesome. Like, and if you're not, you're, you're not. If, if you're at a company that doesn't pay for, pay for it or rewards you for that, fine. 
but don't hate on those that do. Like, let's, like we're just reaping the benefit of it, and it's fantastic. And the reason that we're able to do that is because – and do it at such a large amount and such a high level is because it's based on gross revenue, not net profit. If we had the gross revenue – and the reason that it works in our model is because we don't have the brick and mortar. Like, my office that I came from was roughly four four $450,000 a year to keep the lights on, the doors open, and the staff salaries paid. That's a big, fat overhead. Now, multiply that by, you know, 500 offices around the country or, or whatever the case may be. We don't have that expense. Our entire company runs out of 450 square feet of brick and mortar in Bellingham, Washington. We have brick and mortar where it needs to be. We have 130 full-time staff in the cloud that are working from home, probably working from home in their pajamas, but they're in the cloud, so you don't know what's happening. And, and really, one of the great things is, you know, my last year, I had spent $52,000 roughly on training, coaching, education, travel, and accommodations around the country to go to this class, to go to this class, to go to that class, and I'm a single parent. And so I was really struggling with what I could go to, when I could leave, and combined with trying to have a personal life and maybe take a personal vacation here and there. It was really hard to balance. And I joined this company. I'm on vacation on my way to Nicaragua. And while I'm in the plane, I'm participating live in a class in the cloud while I'm physically in the cloud. I'm like, this is next level badassery. Like, that's <laughs> awesome. Like, and I can do it from anywhere. And I don't have to feel guilty about it. And I, by the way, I'm not spending all this money to go to things that I wasn't learning anything from anymore because it was ended up being the sales pitch for the next thing. So yeah. I was, um, you know, really, really I'm thrilled about it. And we have like world class training within our cloud campus. It's incredible. Yeah, Absolutely yeah, awesome. it is. There's a ton. There's so much training that we have on there, and I don't, I don't even take advantage of half of it right now because it, yeah. it's so much. And you can pick and choose what you want to focus on for that mm -hmm. week or, you know, mastermind with different agents and stuff across the country. And that's another thing, too. Like, there's – and that's one of the main reasons, too, why I, why I started, you know, just my wheels were spinning. The quality of agents that are moving over to e EXP is, like, crazy. You yeah. know, huge agents that are coming over where – you know, we, it would take a long time for us to get a capper over at our, our old place. We're, you have a half a billion in production in just yeah. Southern California alone that just moved over. Huge agents. Yeah. And why well, are they doing it? Be, well, and, and that's the key. Like, when you look at conversion ratios for brokers recruiting agents, it takes a long time. You're, you're working on building a relationship. It takes a long time to get agents transitioned. We don't have that problem for the most part. Like, yeah. yeah, you have some that take a long time to make a decision, but you don't go from a company of less than a thousand people to almost nine thousand in two years by without people like immediately seeing the value and making the jump. Yes, that's what it is. And you know, it's I'm really excited because I feel like. I am in the same place with this company that I grew up in that I love dearly to this day where we were 10, 12 years ago or when I first got into real estate. I feel like we're in the same place. So I'm excited to see what happens in the next 10, 10 years. Like yeah. I'm super stoked. And, and I don't think, I mean, I remember when we had a hundred thousand agents um, back at KW and I didn't, I can't remember what year it is, but I remember when that announcement was made and it was a really big deal. I will bet, I would seriously bet money right now that we'll do it in 2020. I think we're doing it in under two years. With the, the percentage growth that we have, by the way, which has never, ever, ever been done in the history of real estate in this country. KW mm -hmm. and REMAC at their peak, and I, I use them because they were, um, until we came along, the fastest growing brokerages ever in the United States. At their peak, we're between 53 and 55 percent. We're at 181, like year over year. Like, insane. Like, absolutely insane. And it's yeah. really exciting to be a part of. And I'm like, yeah. I just really, it's like, I'm like, ah, I'm like super passionate <laughs> about it. But it's, it's really fun. Oh, funny. So um, what would you, what's your advice to agents that are kind of on the, the fence? Um, like, yeah. what would you say to them? Well, if they're on the fence, I want to know, like, why are you on the fence? Like, what what's what do you, what is it? I mean, because it's something different for everyone. What I found in most conversations, it's, um, you know, the, 
it's a personal relationship that they might have with somebody um, within the company that they're with. Um, and I, I totally get that that can be a really challenging thing. Um, and if we know that the purpose of business is to make money, when you're looking at your kids and trying to put them through college, is that is that relationship going to make it happen? You know, maybe or maybe not. Your friends are going to, your true friends are going to love you no matter where you're at, right? Mm -hmm. Some people might, like, be bitter because you moved or, or whatever, and fine. Like, it, it, they're not making your life choices. Um, but I, I have yet to find somebody who's moved over that, at least in, in my group, that has regretted coming over. They're like, oh, why didn't I do this sooner? I'm like, exactly. Like, one of, um, yeah. one of my uh, recruits, his name is Guy Lofts, who's been a dear friend of mine for years, and... Um, you know, when I first joined, he's like, I don't want to hear anything about it. I don't trust any online company. I'm like, really? <laughs> like, you don't trust Netflix? <laughs> like, come on. And, yeah. um, and uh, anyway, so he came over and he always says now, he's like, I just wish I would have listened to my colleague when, when I, when I first heard about it. And I'm like, and so I just kind of nudged him like, exactly. Like, mm -hmm. listen. but, yeah. um, you know, I would just explore First of all, EXP is not for everyone. Everyone's not for EXP, and that's okay. I just keep an open mind and keep a business mind about it and figure out what you need to figure out from there. Um, yeah. I think this is really the big thing. So, um, do, like, do you feel we have a, a good culture here at EXP compared to where you came from? Yeah, well, I, I think that we have different kind of culture. I'll, I'll mm -hmm. say that. So, um in that, you know, people, you know, I've heard a lot of commentary, like, how do you get culture in the cloud? And they yeah. make assumptions like, oh, well, you can't, you can't if you're, if you're in a cloud, like, you're not around people and all the rest of it. It's like so far from the truth. Like, when yeah. you are truly integrated in the cloud, people are there. You're running all over the place. You're kicking a soccer ball. You're in a class. You're dancing. You're having fun. You're yeah. on a freaking boat in, in the cloud. Like, it's it's crazy. <laughs> um, and it's it's really, really fun. And it's a great environment and super helpful. And you can talk to anyone and walk around. And it's weird at first, but once you're in there for a minute, it becomes like a second nature environment. Yeah. Um, so, and, and I found it to be fantastic. And anytime that anyone I know has needed help with something, it's it's instant it's not i mean we have 130 some employees that in that cloud like there are people there to help at all times and right. um and agents i mean we have such a great format on um workplace with our agent interaction um and and support it's just it's been amazing yeah that's so, one thing that we actually had to learn too um because we're so used to emailing or calling to get an answer and yeah. my assistant that um, she left because she's having a baby, she was like, why aren't they getting back to me? And it was just like all new. And I'm like, we have to go in the cloud. If you want an answer, go in the cloud and you'll get an answer right away. Like, yeah, there's absolutely. somebody standing at a table, like they'll walk over, boom, boom, let's go grab a table and your answer is done, they'll fix the problem. Yeah. Yeah, it's just it's, completely different, and it's a lot faster, even right. though it is different. And that's one of the things that was super weird to me. I'm like, I don't want to be playing, you know, in the avatar world. But then after you get into it, it's fun. Yeah. Uh, it makes the job fun. Well, let's be very clear. This is where the world is heading. The, the, <laughs> it's where the world is going. Yep. This is, I mean, can you imagine now going back to life before Amazon? Like, no. It's just, yeah. Like, <laughs> I was, so I have a, a CPAP and I stepped on my mask the other night and broke it and I'm like, shit, I'm going to have to go to the doctor's office tomorrow and pick it up and it's $175 and so I go on, on, on my phone, I'm like, it's $17 on Amazon and it will be here tomorrow. I'm like, click, done. I just, and I remember thinking online ordering was so weird when it first happened, I didn't trust it. Like, my grandma refused to order anything online. I couldn't even buy her plane tickets online with her credit card because she was convinced <laughs> the hackers were going to come and steal all the information and, or whatever. So I'd book her a plane ticket, and she'd write me a check back for it. Like, oh, that's funny. how it was. But I remember, like, that mentality now, which was only a few years ago, seems so ancient, right? Like, yep. This is where the think about where 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 it is, and if you look at like, it wasn't the inception of Netflix that bankrupted Blockbuster. Netflix and, and Blockbuster coexisted for a long time. Yeah, the idea of being able to mail order your your DVDs was really cool, but it was when Netflix created the streaming quality 
or, or streaming ability within their their format that within two years Blockbuster was bankrupt. It all yeah. went to the cloud, boom, they're done. And that's mm -hmm. going to happen within this industry. And maybe some companies will go bankrupt, some won't. Some, uh, some will always be there to some effect, but if they're not paying attention to what's happening, or if you're not paying attention to what's happening and you consider yourself a leader in this business, you're doing yourself a disservice. Mm -hmm. Not to say that, again, I'm not saying that EXP is right for everybody, but if you're not paying attention to that market disruptive technology, you need to be. I mean, this is no longer, this is not the day where, you know, the, you have to wait once a month for your, your office to get an MLS book printout that everyone has to fight over to figure <laughs> out what the new listings are. I mean, yeah. hell, when I when I first, you know, got into this business, I remember the Moto Razor phone was like yeah. the hot phone at the time. And like, was it magenta, the flip one? I had the red one. It was oh, flip. Okay. I had the red one. <laughs> I loved the red one. And you know, trying to text and got email and offer, and then when we got DocuSign, like, oh my God, we can electronically sign things. Just think about, you know, if you've been in this business for, I'd say you know, set over seven years, there's already been a ton of change in how we do business in that short period of time. Fast forward, where do you think the rest of it's gonna be in another 10 years? Mm -hmm. You gotta stay on top of it for yourself, for your clients and and everyone else. Yeah, So for your family. I mean, yeah, ultimately yeah, it comes down to that for me. So awesome. So do you have anything else to say? Otherwise I think you, uh, you explained everything. No, I just really like your blouse here. I'm like, oh, I am up. Very like Asian kimono type. I think it's really pretty. I'm like, where did you find that? It's at a little, oh, so we, there's a super cute boutique um, right by me. And it's funny because my mom has been telling me to go there for like, I don't know, three, four years since they opened. My mom's like, oh, they have really cute stuff. I'm like, okay, mom. Like, <laughs> I don't know. I don't believe you. Right. And then my friend, Gina, um, she's actually a buyer's agent. Oh my gosh, you have to go there. They have... I mean, for me, I'm a, I'm a bigger girl, you know, and you think boutique, you're thinking like size zero, you know? And right. I went there, I'm like, oh my gosh, they have cute clothes. So I go there all the time. So yeah, they you have know, super, they do. You ever come down here, there's an awesome boutique in Milwaukee in the third ward, which is super fun. Like we could have a girly afternoon, go to brunch, you know, I'll take you to the biggest Bloody Mary place in Wisconsin. And then we got to go to this boutique because they've got <laughs> awesome stuff. And I spend way too much money whenever I go there, but it's fantastic. We, I yeah, we for, bit, I need to get, to get out get there. there. That would be yeah, awesome. For sure. I mean, you're only a five hour drive, just so you know, like that's it. From Madison, <laughs> and then it's like an hour and a half to Milwaukee. So yeah. <laughs> awesome. All right. Well, well, I look forward to uh, seeing you in Las Vegas. Hopefully we can connect and yeah. have an awesome time in Iceland. And thank you so much you. For, for doing the video and um, have an awesome rest of the week. Absolutely. My pleasure. You can take care. Bye. Bye.